Hey guys, Sam here at NA Studios. I want to show you what I think are the five coolest features of Logic that you might not know about. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit like. Let's check it out. Right, so the first one is in the plugin list, and this is something about stuff that used to be in Logic but isn't necessarily now. It's the legacy plugins, so the old plugins they don't include anymore, except they do. So right now you can um, change your plugins you can put them in whatever order you want if you open your plugin list you'll just get this which is kind of familiar but you can open some you know you can put some, your own um, menus in there what you can do though is if you hold alt and click in there you'll get one called legacy and this is where all of the old plugins lie so this is all of the old compressors all of the old reverbs all that kind of stuff i particularly like the um the bass amp i think that's a really cool sound um the old one a trick that i used to do was to um, duplicate the bass amp tone and kind of have two one after the other and you get a really aggressive um, metal kind of tone which you could blend in um, in sort of parallel that's a free trick for you nice and aggressive tone and you can just bring that up underneath everything else um, but it's not just the bass amp that's there you've got the old um, guitar amp as well so let's click alt legacy and we've got Let's have a look. The old Guitar Amp Pro, which is kind of cool. You can move the mic around. There's some different stuff now. You know, you can go a bit more advanced with it. Um, with, uh, what's it called? The Amp Rig um, that we've got. Uh, yeah, pedal board. And then there's the um, Amp Designer. Yeah, but this is the old one. Um, and I've still kind of got a soft spot, spot for it. A lot of stuff's been ported over, but it is kind of cool. Um, and with that as well, you've got um, the old reverbs, which sound kind of dodgy now, but they're kind of cool. You know, um, loads of EQ stuff there. Go crazy with it. That's all the old plugins that used to be in Logic that they don't include as standard, except they do. All right, so next up um, is something which is in the plugin interface on the compressor, but that you've probably seen a million times, but that you won't always have a look at. So I'm going to pop it on a snare trigger track. Um, and this is just in the normal compressor menu. So this is about the metering. The standard meter, as we can see here, just shows our gain reduction but if we go over to the graph this is a really intuitive way of demonstrating compression and what we can do is we can um, visualize exactly the attack and release times and that's what i think this is really good at checking out the attack and release times and how they relate to your signal let's check it out with the snare so we're going to do some pretty extreme settings here just so we can kind of see it um, let's take auto release off because that's always rubbish let's have a look <laughs> Okay, so you can just see a little bit of uh, compression kind of tickling it. Let's bring the ratio up and let's bring the threshold down so we can really see it. Let's loop a section here. Okay, so we can see that the compression is happening more or less straight away, as you can see, 15 milliseconds, and then it's a little bit of a longer release, which is 50 milliseconds here. As I bring up this release knob, you'll see that the... Um, the release gets longer. You see, that's taking longer to return. But what you can see here is that the release is too long. It's taking too long to return, and before it's had chance to return to normal, another hit sounding. So you can use this one to kind of time your release settings. Let's just fine tune it. Let's get it so that it hits exactly, there we go. So the release is releasing and it's going back to no gain reduction at all, just as we're about to um, hit the new uh, hit, the new hit, let's say. Um, and you can do that on any of them here and you'll notice um, some kind of different shapes. So you can see here that I've not changed any of the settings, but on this one, which is like the emulation of the LA-2A, the release is far, far shorter. Um, and let's go to something, oh, I don't know, let's go to this one. You see that the curve is far different there. And then let's go to um, the focus right. You see the compression is, is hardly anything at all there, or, or far less anyway. So this is kind of a really good way of visualizing the different compressors in Logic as well. Um, it's good for your uh, attack and release times, but also to kind of see the differences. For example, if we were to go to the 1176 emulation, we would see something completely different and far more aggressive in the focus point. Just flip between them and you can see the difference. <laughs> a 
Okay, really excellent way of visualizing the differences between, um, for a start, the two, com the, well, not two, more than one compressor in um, Logic, but also the attack and release settings. Dead, dead handy, that. So number three, we're going to have a look at some audio to MIDI stuff. Now let's have a listen to this guitar part that I've got here. It's a lead part. Um, let's just hear it. It's just a little picked kind of melody bit. Kind of cool. And what I've done is I've doubled that sound on a pluck synth. Which, when you have them together, it adds kind of an extra dimension to it. But in Logic, we don't actually have to um, play that in. We don't have to program it in, write it in or anything. We can just derive the MIDI from the audio, which is kind of handy. Um, so this is audio to MIDI, number three. Let's see how we do this. First of all, we want to have Flex Edit on and we need to go on to flex pitch because it needs to pick up the notes of this part. If we haven't done so already, we're going to analyze for flex editing and then we're going to go on to edit and then we're going to go to create MIDI track from flex pitch data. And that is going to do exactly what it says. So we've now created some MIDI parts just from this audio data. Now, one thing I will say with this is that it's not perfect in the sense that it kind of is perfect because it picks up every single note that you're playing, every single sound. If you've palm muted, if you've moved your arm a little bit, it will pick that up as a note, um, which can create some happy accidents, which I've had in the past. Um, but in this instance, we only want to have the actual notes on there. So what I'm going to do is um, just drag this uh, synth sound. What is it? The synth pluck. Um, let's just drag that over to the instrument for a second so we can hear it. And you'll hear how it's not quite what we want at the moment. There's some kind of weird stuff in there. So we can get rid of all these sort of extraneous notes. And it doesn't quite pick up some of them because as you bend the, the string or if you pick it a little bit harder, it'll think that it's sharp. Or if you bend it in, it'll think it's sharp. Um, so you do kind of have to go in and manipulate that a little bit. Um, but far easier than having to play it in, far easier than having to draw it in, whatever it is. And it comes up with some really, really interesting results. Number four then is how we can take a audio file um, and not necessarily process it within Logic, but we can use Logic to open it in another application. Let's have a look at what I mean. So this is uh, just a lead part. But there may be some kind of extraneous sounds in there that we don't necessarily want. So if we double click on that, we can press Shift and W and that will open it in our external audio editor. Now I've got this set to be isotope RX. You can set it to be wherever you want. Um, it go to preferences, audio, and then across to uh, file editor and your external sample editor is selected here. So I've got it just um, just as Isotope RX6. That's the latest version that I've got. Um, you can have it as Adobe Audition or anything else that you think is going to give you a bit more um, the ability to kind of manipulate it a little bit more than you might be able to in Logic. So in um, RX, for example, I can see all the specific notes and I can take out a certain note or, or whatever it is I want to do. And then what I can do there is go to file and then um, I've not made any changes, so it won't let me, but um, you can overwrite original file. And then what that will do is it will take the file that you've got within Logic, it will process it within Isotope RX or whatever your external sample editor is, and then save it over the original file so that when you then open up Logic, it will just bring it straight in. You won't have to mess around with lining them up or bringing it out or taking it back in again, anything like that. It just automatically puts it in for you. And then number five, finally, um, this is again something about how you can take something out of Logic and put it through um, an external piece of equipment. This is the I.O. plugin. Now, I find this really handy for um, guitars going into guitar pedals um, or vocals going into guitar pedals. Um, and I've got a video about that coming up very soon. So make sure you check out the rest of the channel. Um, but we can do this very simply. So uh, let's do it on the bass, for example. We just go into a new slot, go on utility is where I have it set to, um, I.O., and then mono. So we can send our signal out of, let's say for example, um, output number one, and then we can bring it back into input number two. So we can set up a loop. So out of our interface, we can go out of output number one, and then into our guitar pedals, and then back into input number two, or input number one, or wherever we want to send it. Um, and we can bring the output volume down, we can bring the input volume up, or whatever we want to do really handy way of including some outboard gear and some hardware into your setup.
All right, I hope that's been useful for you then. There's five elements there that I think are super useful in logic and they're not ones that everyone kind of knows about. They're not ones that everyone uses every single day. So I think they're kind of hidden features that are um, a good way to kind of up your game in logic. Thanks a lot for watching. Make sure you check out the rest of the channel. Subscribe, hit like, all that good stuff. Take care.